Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back, or if you're new, I'm GB and welcome to my channel. This is a place for anyone who loves puzzles, whether you're new to puzzling or you consider yourself an expert. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you all the puzzles I received for the month of October. And this is definitely the biggest haul I have ever had on this channel. I don't know what happened during the month of October, it just seemed to be the month that never ended and I think this is the haul that was never going to end. Uh, but I have some really colourful, fun, exciting puzzles to share with you. There's all sorts of brands, including brands that are new to me and brands that are new on the market as well. Uh, there's like all different styles and different by different artists, um, even some wooden puzzles. So I think this is going to be a very long video, possibly even a feature length film. So make sure you get lots of snacks, lots of drinks, get super comfy and let's go through them all. So I've just sorted all the puzzles based on brand. Um, and we have quite a few uh, stacks to get through. So yeah, let's just get started. Um, so most of the ones here are all Gallison. So feel free to judge me since I always say how much they bug me, bit of a love-hate relationship. But I still went ahead and got a whole heap anyway. So yes, go ahead and judge. So the first one here is a 1000 piece one called Mixtapes. Um, I don't know if we've got the artist here, oh, Julia Ream. And yeah, it's just a really kind of a simple design, but really colorful and fun. It's just uh, all these sort of like, I guess, diagonal lines of colorful mixtapes. Actually, it reminds me of one that I got recently from Ravensburger. That was like a little 200 piece one that was, I think also just called like mixtapes or something. And yeah, same sort of thing with these like retro, very colorful mixtapes. It's kind of interesting. Um, I had a lot of mixtapes as a teenager and they certainly did not come in pretty colors like this. They were always boring gray and or clear or black. So uh, yeah, this is a bit of a colorful mixtape fantasy. But yeah, I think this one would just be really fun to do. And yeah, I think it's, yeah, looking forward to it. And then we've got another very colorful one. I mean, I guess most puzzles I get are pretty colorful. This one's 1000 pieces. Um, so yeah, all of these are Gallison except the very last one. But so I guess I won't need to say Gallison all the time. This one's called Bees and the Poppies. Um, and I don't, the last puzzle was like a photographic puzzle and this one sort of looks like photographic but kind of digital and collage-y um, and this is by Troy Litton who actually does a lot of photography stuff so I'm not too sure but it almost looks very like hyper real, hyper realistic and very hyper detailed but yeah it's all these beautiful I guess poppy flowers, lots of like these very rich kind of intense colours actually, it's got a very warm feel to it. And they're, it's really beautiful. And then in amongst them are lots of little bees. It's like, you don't notice it at first glance because it's such a sort of busy packed picture. Um, but yeah, lots of little bees. And I think there might even be some other insects in here too. Oh, I can see a ladybug. I feel like there might be spiders, which, ugh, yes, okay, I can see a teeny spider. Ugh. Okay, I'll try not to, when I do this one, I'll try not to look too closely because spiders give me the heebie-jeebies. Um, not a fan. They stay over there and I stay here, we're good. Uh, but yeah, anyway, a beautiful puzzle despite some creepy crawlies, but the bees are really cute and the ladybug's cute and yeah, just beautiful, rich colors. So I think it's gonna look really stunning when it's put together. And then we've got kind of some more flower plant ones here. So I've got this little 500 piece one, which is called Sunflower Blooms. And yeah, oh, who's this by? Um, uh, oh, Julie Ream, so the same artist or photographer who did the mixtapes. Um, yeah, this just looks like photos of just lovely, colorful sunflowers. And who knew that sunflowers came in all sorts of different pretty shades, not just the classic yellow, but this kind of burnt orange and like almost white and really dark kind of brownie maroon colors. But yeah, just a really cheery, happy, again, kind of a simple but like impactful bright, colorful, bold image. So I just thought that looked like a really fun one. Um, you know, good to do on a rainy day, I think. So yeah, I think that'll be good fun. And then again, another sort of plants one. So this is 500 pieces and it's called Shrooms in Bloom and it's spectacular. Um, this is by Heather Brooks. And yeah, I guess it's like, it looks like photography as well, but it's all these like very colorful, uh, mushrooms and sort of fungus um, and it's just beautiful like the colors are really pretty almost sort of bright pastels like sort of uh, kind of violety pastely purple and like these mint greens and even the reds aren't like super bright reds but they're sort of a little bit pastel or faded 
it's really pretty. Um, kind of a little creepy looking too. I always, mushrooms I think look really intriguing, but almost a little mysterious and creepy. Maybe also because of that like uh, poison factor where you're like, not all mushrooms are good for eating. So yeah, but I've actually seen like, I don't know if it's all her artwork, but I've seen quite a few uh, puzzle puzzles out there, not just by Gallison that have these sort of mushroom like pictures or colors and stuff on them. So it seems to be uh, quite in at the moment. But yeah, I really love this one and I think it's gonna look beautiful when it's done. And then I've got a couple of festive ones here. So another 500 piece one, and this one's called Wintry Cats. And I saw this a while ago and it's been on my wish list for a while and I was finally able to get it. And it's just really cute. Oh, who's the artist? Um, Angela Rosala, hopefully I said that correctly. And it's just these really cute, very big eyed kitties. Um, yeah, really cute little kitty cats, all different colors and patterns, but they've all got cute, uh, big wintry scarves on. So I'm thinking of saving this one for Christmas, even though here it's summer when it's Christmas. So we don't really wear scarves and sweaters and things, but you know, it's always fun to still do these sort of like festive wintry kind of like puzzles and things like that. But yeah, the scarves are really pretty. They all have like different decorations. Like some have snowflakes and pine, what do you call it? Like pine needles, um, other patterns, little cherries, um, poinsettia flowers. Those like red Christmas flowers. Yeah, it's really cute. So it's definitely kind of, yeah, festive and Christmassy and cats. So I don't think you can go wrong with that combination. So I think that will be a really cute one to put together. And then I also have another Christmassy festive one, 500 pieces. It's called Winter Perch and it is by uh, Kugla Zimmerman. Hopefully I said that correctly. This one's really adorable. It's um, definitely very Christmassy, I guess. It's got these bird houses and these cute little like birds uh, flying around and even on the bird houses and then lots of like, you know, like, oh, Christmas, I guess, holly and a poinsettia and other leaves and things. And it's got like snowflakes and bits of snow on like the birdhouse roofs and stuff. And it's just a very pretty style. It's like almost a bit like folk art because the birds and um, the birdhouses have like those like intricate little folk art kind of details. So yeah, it looks like it's been painted. Uh, not too sure, but yeah, it's just very sweet and kind of whimsical and just very pretty. So I think this will be a really fun one to do for Christmas as well. And then we've got, oh, we have a few more actually from uh, Gallison. Oh, let's do this one. So this one is Gallison, but the fashion designer, I believe, Christian Lac... Hang on, Christian Lacroix? Lacroix? I can't speak French or pronounce it apparently. So I apologize. Um, yeah, so it's sort of like, there's a few of these floating around. It's like a sort of collaboration, I believe. Um, so this is a kind of a bit of an interesting puzzle. It's a double-sided one and it's 250 pieces. And I guess, uh, well, one side, one side of the image is what you see on the front minus the strip going across it. Hopefully you'll be able to see a picture up here somewhere showing it without this big strip across it. Um, yeah, and it's all just like, uh, oh, I forgot to say the name of this. <sighs> okay, Maison de Jeu, which is like House of Games or Game House, I believe is the translation. I did a bit of high school French, okay? So <laughs> I can remember some bits and pieces, but my pronunciation has never been good. Um, so yeah, it's all like these red and white stripes and then all these really detailed and very beautifully illust illustrated sort of like uh, a spread of playing cards. Um, yeah, and so it's very pretty and it's like summer decorated with butterflies and like people and flowers and yeah, all different colors and patterns. It's very like intricate and detailed and just really beautiful. And then the other side of the puzzle is kind of what you see on the back of this minus the big white square in the middle. It does actually have the whole images here as well, but the back kind of is like, I think it's actually like the reverse of what's on like the back of these playing cards. It's sort of this interesting pattern of what looks like wattle flowers and like these birds and 
um, yeah, just like sort of a bit of a mix of like art deco-y kind of swirly designs and stuff. Um, yeah, so I think this will be a really beautiful and kind of interesting puzzle. I don't do too many double-sided puzzles um, and I've never done any by this designer. So yeah, I think it's gonna be kind of interesting and fun to do. And then we have another kind of Gallison collaboration. So this is with, I think he is a designer, like an interior designer or furniture designer, but I could be wrong, Jonathan Adler. So this one's 1000 pieces um, and it's called, I think it's just called Shelfie. Are you called Shelfie? Maybe? Why does it not say the name on here? I think it's called Shelfie. Um, yep, doesn't say the name. And again, We've got this big annoying strip of paper going across. I probably should have taken that off earlier, but I apologize, but hopefully you'll see a nice image up here. Um, but yeah, it's a really cute, colorful design of basically like shelves in, I guess, a living room or something. And yeah, it's just all the fun ornaments that are on there. So you've got different colorful books and you've got vases of flowers, um, some interesting artworks. Yeah, lots of really interesting vases, I guess, some plants bowl of lemons, other sort of like interesting sculptures and things. Uh, yeah, all sorts of interesting knickknacks and arty sort of things. And I have the feeling that some of these uh, like sculptures or vases might actually even be Jonathan Adler's designs. That would kind of make sense because he. Do I remember being in LA many years ago and actually going past a Jonathan Adler store and it had all sorts of interesting furniture and like interior design knickknacks and they all looked really f like funky and colorful and quirky so it wouldn't surprise me if these are like actually taken from, like from his actual real life designs anyway i think it's just really cute and um yeah i'm looking forward to it and i just realized there's a <laughs> the whole image on the back whoops um but yeah i think it's just gonna be really just fun and cute and then we've got two more here from gallison or actually they're mud puppy but that's part of gallison so I guess designed more for kids, but I always think they have really fun, cute designs. So this one's 500 pieces and it's called Open for Business. And it's sort of like, I guess, a few little, like a, some shops, but they're all Japanese shops. So I guess it's sort of meant to be in Japan. Um, and it's just got all little animal characters, I guess like humanoid animal characters just running the shops or being customers and sort of like, yeah, it's almost like someone's taking a snapshot of like a busy shopping street. So we've got at the bottom here, takoyaki, which is like the sort of fried octopus ball snack that you can get in Japan. So it's got the person making them and then people buying them and the cute little octopus sign. Um, so if you ever go to Japan, you actually see them having these cute little octopus images on these types of stores. Then above that is like the ice cream store. It's pretty cute. Um, yeah, each one's got like actually like written in Japanese. I studied Japanese in university recently, so I can read a lot of this. So that's helpful. Um, but yeah, it's just got really cute little signage and cute little animal people, animal people, humanoid animals, whatever characters. And then over on this side, we have, oh, down here, like a little udon noodle shop. It's got like a little, noodle menu and like a businessman getting his like quick I guess udon noodles for lunch maybe and then above that we've got um oh a fish shop like a and yeah I guess it's just selling fish and I don't think they're doing sushi you know it just looks like it's like a little fish market or something so yeah kind of really cute and I like that it's got a lot of Japanese uh like text on it it's kind of that really speaks to me and yeah, it's just really quite fun and colorful and really full of cute little illustrations. And I think I forgot to say, this is by the artist Nini, Nini Wanted. So I guess that's like their sort of artist name, probably not their real name, but yeah, really cute. And I think it'd be super fun. And another really cute one, which is also by Mud Puppy or Gallison, um, also full of little animal characters. This is called Critter City and it's 500 pieces and it is by Anya Ribensam, hopefully I said that right. And again, it's sort of like a street scene, but this one's very much a New York looking street scene. So we're traveling the world a bit here and it has just really cute animals. Um, looks like we've got a sort of cafe underneath, like at the bottom of like a sort of New York apartment 
building because you've got all these like apartment windows and those kind of classic metal fire escape ladders or stairs. And yeah, we've got all sorts of animal, well, critter city. We've got uh, cows in a taxi. We've got chickens running around. We've got raccoons riding a bicycle together. There's a giraffe next door. Um, got a bear and some piggies and sheep and a goat enjoying their time at the cafe. And then all sorts of fun and interesting residents in the apartments above. And there's all sorts of <laughs> crazy stuff going on. There's like a dog with a balloon. There's cute little butterflies. There's like monkeys swinging around. And yeah, there's like lots of, it's packed full of details and it's just very adorable. Um, and yeah, I just saw it and thought it's super cute. And I've just discovered something else in it that's cute. There's a sausage dog riding along on a skateboard. That is the cutest. So. If you like cute little animal illustrations, this could be the one for you as well. Gosh, okay, my pile's getting kind of big there. Okay, last one for this stack is not from Gallison. This is from, uh, can I pick it up? Um, Wooden City. So this was gifted to me by Wooden City, I guess, puzzles. I mean, they don't just do puzzles. They do like, uh, like wooden 3D models that you can put together and like kind of wooden maps and yeah, a whole heap of wooden puzzles both like rectangle but also shaped so this is a shaped one um, and it's called mystic tiger and it's 505 pieces and it's i've actually done this one recently on instagram so feel free to go check that out if you're interested and you can see lots of photos of it but yeah i really liked it um beautiful quality and the image is just stunning of this like white tiger with like this ornate floral and feathery and jeweled headdress lots of pinks and purples and stuff so very very pretty um, and it advertises having 80 whimsies and I didn't count them all, but there were a lot. So I think that's pretty accurate. Um, yeah, there were heaps of whimsies and they were really fun, like all different like animals and insects and things. So yeah, it was really cool. And were there plants? I can't remember, but yeah, like there's a spider in there. Didn't like that one, but there was like wild cats and like tiger birds, lizards, like, yeah, it was really cool and really fun to put together. And I thought the quality was really nice on this one. Um, and what else? Yeah. Um, oh, and the back of the pieces on this one, they're not just plain like wood color. They actually have like a little uh, kind of floral leafy black pattern printed on it. So I thought that was kind of cool. Um, and they're plastic free as well. So yeah, pretty kind of uh, interesting and like they obviously are quite it's a bit of a selling point or they're quite proud like sort of advertising on their product and I guess on their website and stuff that they are plastic free but yeah and so yeah when it was delivered to me there was no plastic at all I think the box it came in was just cardboard as well so yeah pretty pleased with that um, so yeah I really enjoyed it and um, yeah I could see myself doing this one again I think it's just a really gorgeous puzzle and I guess if you're the sort of person to like I don't know how easy it is to stick together wooden puzzles. I know like Unidragon have kits where you can like, I think, stick them together and so do some other puzzle companies. So you probably could glue or, I don't know, use clear contact or something to stick it together, but it'd look pretty cool, like on display, I think. Anyway, uh, that's enough rambling about that. Loved it. Uh, definitely recommend that one. And so that's everything for this stack. So let's get to the next one. So this next pile has a fair mix of different brands. So the first one we've got is a hay puzzle. It's 1000 pieces and it's by the, I think that they're a group of artists called eBoy and this is their like city range and this is Tokyo. So I've got the other city ones they've done like the Berlin, New York and London. And um, I've had fun doing those ones and because I love Japan and I've been enjoying those, I figured of course I'm gonna have to get the Tokyo one. Um, but yeah, all their artworks is sort of like super hyper detailed kind of 8-bit pixel style artwork and it's always very uh, quirky cheeky fun colorful there's always so many weird things going on and it actually says down here pixarama seek and find stars and sights so i think the idea is like not only is it fun to put together but there's lots of little like puns or famous icons and things that you'll find as you do the puzzle um, I definitely could spot a few when I did like some of the other cities, but there's definitely lots of stuff where I was like, that's just weird and fun and quirky, but I don't know what it actually is referring to. So some, you might have a better idea if you know the city better than I do, or you live there or something. Um, but yeah, so this one is really fun um, to start with. It's a bit crazy because we've got this 
bright pink monster robot kind of destroying its way through Tokyo. So that's not good. But yeah, we've got a lot of um, famous Tokyo buildings, including like the Tokyo Tower over here, uh, the famous sort of Sega building, which I think doesn't exist anymore, sadly. Um, some of these like department stores that are real actual department stores in Japan. And then, yeah, there's all sorts of like this interesting mix of like modern and like interesting sky rise buildings. But then you've got like traditional Japanese garden over here and people doing yoga on top of this building and ninjas and yeah, all sorts of fun stuff. A lot of naked people <laughs> in this one. I don't know why, but there are. Um, but yeah, there's just like so much going on, lots of fun characters and colors and yeah, I think it's just going to be really quirky and enjoyable to do. And then I have another little one from Hay. Um, this one is part of, oh, okay, so there's a series by the artist Jeremiah Kettner called Dreaming and this one's called Crystal Fox and pretty much is what it says. Oh, it's only 500 pieces and uh, this is love at first sight. I just love the colors and the imagery. It's just this cute little cartoony, um, yeah, really adorable little fox and it's got all these crystals and has a little crystal on its head and I love these colors like the teals and pinks and purples. It's just to me so pretty. So yeah, I don't think there's like too much to say about it. I just think it's just gorgeous and I'm looking forward to hopefully doing this one soon. I think I'll just pop it over here since it's kind of small. Um, and then we've got one here from the brand Water and Wines. It's 1000 pieces and um, it's their champagne puzzle. Um, and all their puzzles are maps. Um, and they're all, well, they started off as wines, um, but they've done a whiskey one and what else? Well, champagne, and I think they're gonna be working on beer and some other different drinks. Um, but yeah, they're like these really like detailed maps of like the region. Like, so this is Champagne, which is, I guess, France, Champagne in France, but they do have like a France wine puzzle and then like a map of Italy, which is the Italy wine puzzle. And I did the Whiskey Scotland one. Um, so yeah, but they put in lots and lots of details and beautiful illustrations and put all the labels in like of all the different wine or I guess Champagne areas and different types of things. Um, yeah, and lots of wine related imagery. So very, very pretty and detailed. Um, and they have like, they're quite, it's quite informative. Like the packaging has like extra info on the back and even on the inside of the box lids. Um, so yeah, like here it's got uh, making champagne, like it's got the method of how they actually make it and uh, great varieties and types of champagne and some champagne pairing tips. So it's really informative and has really cute illustrations. And then the other thing is the box, like the packaging, packaging as well as the pieces is like the surface is this beautiful, like velvet touch. It's the same, if you've ever done an art and fable puzzle, it's the same as that, this very soft buttery feeling. And to me, the best thing I can uh, connect it to like, I guess relate it to would be like that sort of soft silicon feel of like something like my phone cover is that it's like this really soft squishy silicon it sort of reminds me of that feeling so that's the best the nearest thing i can compare it to but yeah it's beautiful and the other bonus is um that type of finish on the pieces is like completely matte it sort of almost absorbs the light so you don't get any glare or sheen at all really cool anyway i think this one is beautiful love the sort of blush pastel kind of colors very pretty lots of beautiful really intricate um, details so yeah i think i'm gonna enjoy doing that one and then i actually have another water and wine ones that are that i received recently that someone just gave me um i don't i'm not going to show the box i'll try and put a picture up here because the box is really damaged so i just got it for free um, at a recent puzzle swap um, but the, the puzzle itself, I've actually just done it. It's actually the Italy one from Water and Wines, 1000 pieces. And it's, yeah, the map of Italy and all the little wine images. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed that one. Um, and it's like mostly green. And um, I don't think it's quite as pretty as like the champagne one. I feel like, I think the Italy one might be like a bit of an older design and it's a bit more, less illustrative in a weird way. Like it's probably more like a map rather than full of illustrations. Whereas I find like the champagne one, which is a new one. And I think even the Scottish whiskey one has a lot more like 
cute little drawings and things in it rather than just being a map. Um, but I still enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not really a, much of a drinker, but I quite enjoy these water and wines puzzles. I think they're good fun. They make great gifts um, and they just feel really good. And they just, yeah, there's a lot of detail. So you can really, even if you don't really drink, you can still appreciate putting it together and enjoy it. And they're always colorful and interesting to look at. Um, yeah, so definitely enjoyed the Italy one. Um, just pretend it's here. <laughs> but I, yeah, like I said, hopefully there'll be an image of it somewhere up here. Um, so the next few puzzles here are from uh, Magnolia puzzles and they're fairly recent from their new collection. Um, and these are all by the same artist. So this, yeah, so all three, including this one are by the artist. Let's see if I can pronounce it right. Laverin, I think, like, I don't think that's the person's real name. It's like their art artist name. Laverin, Laverine. I'm not too sure, but I think they're based in Indonesia. Anyway, um, so this particular puzzle is 1000 pieces and it's called Midnight Blue and I actually just did this one over on Instagram. So if you're curious, you can go check that out as well. And yeah, all of the artist's artwork is just this beautiful, uh, like Japanese manga inspired artwork. So and it's just, yeah, it's like very fantasy and inspired by nature. And it's really, really intricate, like intri has intricate uh, illustrations and details and it's just stunning and the colors are just beautiful like this one it's gorgeous sort of inky indigos blues purples really really pretty it was quite challenging to put together because it's um, I believe the artist uses uses watercolors I feel like I'm getting a bit tongue-tied okay the artist uses watercolors and even though the image looks fairly clear and crisp um, on the box when you're looking at individual pieces it's a lot harder to differentiate things like things get a bit more I guess not blurry but like less defined because of the watercolor nature I guess um, so yes trying to like pick out all these different shades of things is quite tricky but it looks stunning um, completed so definitely pleased with that really enjoyed it um, I really like Magnolia puzzles quality as well the pieces are like really smooth um, they feel like they should be glossy but because they're so smooth but they're actually fairly matte and they fit together really nicely and um, not too, uh, a little bit of puzzle dust, but uh, you know, I can overlook that because everything else about them is really nice. Um, yeah, pieces, you can move around sections. So yeah, I'm always excited to get beautiful Magnolia puzzles because I know it's gonna be a nice puzzling experience. But yeah, love this image. It's just so beautiful. This lady with like sort of, I guess she's sort of a butterfly fairy. There's like lots of butterflies and there's these like birds, but they have butterfly wings instead of actual bird wings. And she's got like butterfly wings and there's all these like hydrangea sort of flowers and roses and things. So very beautiful. So yeah, really enjoyed that one. And then the next one, which is by the same artist, also 1000 pieces. This one is called Crystal Unicorn and it's the same sort of kind of Japanese manga style and watercolor. Uh, I haven't done this one yet, but I imagine it's going to be pretty tricky as well. But yeah, it's just stunning has that similar sort of intricate kind of plaster work border. Again, lots of sort of blues and purples, a bit more teals in this one. I guess this, this one's a bit more like brighter, warmer purples. But yeah, there's like little unicorns everywhere. And even she has like a unicorn horn and like little, I guess, unicorn ears. And then everything's very crystally. So there's like all these flowers and then beautiful crystals. And she sort of has like wings, but they look like they're all like little shards of crystals and stuff. Um, yeah, so, so much detail and just really beautiful and like even her dress looks like it's all this intricate lace work, but yeah, I think it's, this one is going to be another gorgeous one to put together. And then the last one from Magnolia is also 1000 pieces and by the same artist. And this one is called White Rabbit. And this is an Alice in Wonderland inspired, inspired design. Um, Gosh, there's so much going on in this one. So again, we've got another female character here. And this one literally has lots of lace work in it and flowers and things. Um, yeah, it's just got lots of little references to like Alice in Wonderland. So you've got the Queen of Hearts here. You've got lots of clocks and things. She's got like uh, rabbit ears here. Um, there's like a bubble down here where it's got like Alice and the Mad Hatter and I guess the rabbit having their little tea party. And yeah, it's like the caterpillar and the Cheshire cat. 
Yeah, all little details from the Alice in Wonderland sort of story. Um, and there's just so much like, so many pretty little things, pearls and lace work, even these sort of diamond backgrounds. And I love the colors in this one, like the purples and teals and pinks. It's just so pretty. So yeah, really looking forward to doing this one. Um, this one as well was actually gifted to me by Magnolia. So thank you very much to them. The other two I purchased myself, but uh, yeah, they asked if I wanted to choose one. So I chose this one. Um, yeah, but just stunning. I think it's so pretty. And then we've got one here from Ravensburger. So this is 1000 pieces. It's part of the Abandoned series. And this one is called Gloomy Carnival. And this one's been on my wish list for a while. Um, I really like, oh, let's move that. I really like this Abandoned series. There's something about abandoned buildings and things like that that I just find very intriguing and mysterious and really interesting. Um, but I just, all the, even though these are illustrated, they're really detailed, but they all, um, as well as being like, even though they're abandoned, I should say, they're not just like black and gray and boring. They're like very colorful actually, even though they're meant to be sort of run down and abandoned. There's each one of these abandoned series ones, like the hotel and department store. And I can't remember what the other one is. I think there's another one. Um, oh, arcade, game arcade. They're all quite colorful and beautiful. Like they have these sort of rich, dark colors peeking through. So we've got like teals and greens and reds and pinks and things. So it's very pretty and even like sort of a sunsetty sky. And yeah, I just love all the details. Like even though things are broken and run down, it's still quite beautiful. So yeah, and this one's, uh, what is it? Gloomy Carnival. So yeah, it's got things that you'd see at a carnival. So like Dodgem cars and the carousel and what else? Ice cream, hot dogs, like a, a little popcorn stand and like the, what's this? Ferris wheel. Um, and oh, fun fair things like the shooting gallery and yeah, all sorts of like, I guess carnival stuff, but yeah, it looks like it's seen better days, but still very beautiful in its own way. And then we have, I think this is a pretty recent one from Clementoni. Um, so this is 1000 pieces and it's a Disney puzzle. And if you know me, you know that I'm not super into Disney, but this one just stood out. I thought it was really cute anyway. So they have this series of Disney story maps, and this is the Alice in Wonderland one. Um, and it's kind of literally like a map, like the image has like the little kind of grid, a pale grid going through it. Um, and it seems to be like, I guess the idea is that it's kind of a map. It's even got the little compass down there, but I guess it visually lays out the story of Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> like weaving all the way through different parts of the map. Oh, it's 1000 pieces. I don't know if I mentioned that, but yeah, there's a few others like there's I think 101 Dalmatians, Little Mermaid, uh, probably some, probably a whole bunch of others coming out too, but I really liked this one. I thought it was just really cute. And the art style is almost a little bit 1950s, um, kind of 50s quirky style, but it's just really cute. I enjoy Alice in Wonderland. I enjoy the cartoon as well. And yeah, it's just got all the things from like the Disney cartoon and just, yeah, really fun. Got Alice, the sort of talking flowers or singing flowers, um, Mad Hatter's Tea Party, the evil queen. And yeah, so I think this is just a really cute one and just a yeah, fun one to add to the collection. And then the last couple here came from, I think I mentioned earlier, one of these, oh, the, Inv the Invisible Water and Wines puzzle was from a puzzle swap that I went to in Sydney recently. So these two came from that as well. So that was a good chance for me to like, get rid of some of my puzzles that I was trying to declutter. And uh, I tried not to come back with too many, but I did pick up a few. So I've got a couple of ones here from Cavallini and Co. Um, this one is called, oh, they're like, they call them vintage puzzles because I guess the imagery is kind of vintage inspired. So this is skeletal system, 1000 pieces and the whole, I mean, the container is like got all this sort of skeleton stuff going around it. But then you've got the whole image on the back. They're kind of like little posters. Um, but yeah, this one, I don't know. I don't know if I would have like bought this because I, I guess I wouldn't have because I haven't so far. But since it was just I was just swapping for it. I was like, yeah, why not? Like these look like nice puzzles and 
looks like a kind of interesting one to do. Probably just pass it on to someone else after I'm done. Um, but yeah, it's just like one of those, almost like you'd see in a doctor's office or something where it's just the human skeleton, where it's got the front image and then the back and the side. And it's got all the like, I mean, I think it's gonna be, I don't know if it'll be big enough to see, but it's got all the sort of like atomically correct kind of labels and things like that. And it's got even close-ups of some of the different bones. It's kind of gross actually. It's a bit creepy um, unless you're into like medicine stuff. So I'm like, why did I get this one? But it's okay. I'll probably do it. And then, like I said, pass it on to someone, but eh, it's interesting. So uh, we'll see how that one goes. Um, oh, I'll just pop it there. And then, yeah, the other one I swapped for as well is a Cavallini and Co. This one's a bit cuter. Um, so this is their dogs one, 1000 pieces. I actually have like the cats and kittens one. Which I still haven't done because I'm a terrible puzzle person and have way too many puzzles to do. That's the story for another time. But yeah, it's just all these really cute um, vintage dog pictures or ad advertisements and stuff. So yeah, again, we've got the box or the cylinder is decorated with all the pictures from the puzzle and then we've got the whole image there. Um, yeah, it's really cute. It's just some of it looks like book covers. So it's like 10 tricks. Uh, for teaching your dog or to teach your dog and then it's got little like advertisements and but they're all just sort of beautiful illustrated little doggies and yeah it's really cute um so yeah, i'm not a dog person but yeah if something like yeah when i see something like this i can appreciate it i think it's just really pretty and cute and i think it'll be nice and colorful and just fun to do again i probably won't keep it in my collection forever i think it's one that i might do and then pass on to someone so yeah, but I think it looks like good fun. So let's get into the next pile of puzzles. Okay, let's go through this pile. So this first one is uh, by the artist Elena Essex and I've been wanting this one for ages. Um, and it was finally a reasonable price on Amazon. The price on Amazon have been really ridiculously high, especially here in Australia, because our Aussie dollar is worth uh, not a lot at the moment, which sucks. Uh, anyway, this is called Woodland Magic and it's 1000 pieces and she does the most beautiful, always very rainbow, colorful puzzles. And yeah, this one's just all different colorful illustrated mushrooms. I just love it. I think it's just so gorgeous. Um, she's actually just released a whole range of new puzzles, but this is from her previous collection. But yeah, glad I finally grabbed this one. Um, I think, yeah, that's like the whole image there. Obviously it's got a little label there and you've got the uh, one there on the back. Um, I don't know if there's much else to say about this one. Beautiful, stunning, love it, love the colors and definitely looking forward to doing this one. And then of course I had to get another mushroom one. I was gonna do this one next, but let's do the mushroom one, keep them together. So this is a 500 piece one and this is from Fred or Genuine Fred. They do puzzles and other fun novelty items. So this is by the artist Helen Dardick. Um, and it's called Mushroom to Muchery, which I think is such a cute name. And I really love her art. I think it's just always so fun and colorful. Um, yeah, and this one's all these beautiful, I think maybe it looks like watercolor. I'm not too sure, um, but yeah, beautifully illustrated or painted mushrooms and leaves and even a little butterfly or a couple of butterflies. But it's really pretty, very, her style's very whimsical and always really colorful and just, and just really pretty and beautiful. So I love the colors here with like these teals and these bright pink mushrooms and the lovely green leaves, little spots on them. Yeah, lots of like, um, not only like colorful, but little lots of like textures and patterns and things like even the little inside of the mushroom with the little stripy bits and spots. Yeah, really cute. Again, the whole image is like on the back and it's got a little, quite like that Fred includes usually a photo of the artist and a little mini bio about the artist too. It's kind of a nice inclusion. So yeah, I think this is a fun one to do. Who knows, maybe I'll even do those ones back to back or something. And then we've got a really fun, colorful puzzle here. So this is from Happy Place Puzzles. It used to be called Travel Club, Puzzle Club. I can't remember, but anyway, I'm glad they changed the name. I think Happy Place is just a much more fun name. Um, and this one's called Fashion and it's by the artist Henny Horworth and it's 1000 pieces and it's really fun and colorful. It kind of almost makes me think of like paper doll cut out outfits, except they don't have like the little paper tabs, but it's just, yeah, all different outfits and accessories. And it's just, I, 
again this one might be watercolor oh no actually i think looking at it it almost looks like um texture like markers or something but yeah really beautifully illustrated and colorful and yeah, there's all these like i feel like this could be my wardrobe i would totally wear half of these things for sure they're like really just pretty and interesting um so it's got like colorful little tops and skirts and dresses but there's like accessories as well like there's a marie antoinette wig there's like fun different sneakers uh little like hats uh, a skateboard um fun like boots and shoes like a cowboy hat um like bags toys yeah it's just really cute and i think it'll be a lot of fun to put together as well um, and then we've got a couple here from new york puzzle company um, and they're by the artist janet hill or it's part of the janet hill studio collection and if you've seen some of my other haul videos you know i have quite a few of these now but i can never seem to help myself so this one's called folly bay and it's 1000 pieces and her style is just very pretty it is quite painterly which isn't always my favorite but i feel like she i just I guess I just really like the way she's done her illustrations or paintings. They're just really beautiful. And they always um, have, they're always a bit quirky and feel a bit vintage inspired, both in terms of like the characters in her paintings, but the color palette, like there's always these sort of very vintagey teal colors and these sort of muted kind of like reds and things. And the characters always look, yeah, a bit vintage. Like this lady down here has sort of like a 1940s style kind of, pants and top on and even her hair looks very sort of 40s styled and yeah and just really pretty um this, this one is just like of this like grand old beach house um it looks very old-fashioned and there's a lady up here with her like telescope and i guess or like a sort of binocular telescope what's the like is it still a telescope if you don't use it to look at stars like a single binocular i don't know if you know let me know um but yeah and there's like a donkey here and they've got all their washing hanging out and they're just sort of enjoying an outdoor i guess gathering lunch or reading the paper or something yeah just very cute even like little details like the little dolphin jumping there and like a seagull hanging out down there so i just think she does very pretty whimsical yeah just really beautiful um artworks and then the next one is by her as well. Um, this one is 500 pieces and it's called Pirate, Pene P Pirate Penelope. That was hard to say. And again, this one's qu probably even quirkier. It's just this lady on this sort of, I guess, riverboat or houseboat. And she's got a patch. She's got some very stylish out a uh, very stylish outfit. She has a toucan on her shoulder and then seems to be surrounded by these uh, pink flamingos. So yeah, kind of interesting pretty weird um i guess pirate penelope's is very fashionable and um hangs out with cool flamingos and toucans so yeah pretty quirky but yeah also very beautiful and then what do i do next um maybe these ones okay so i've got a couple here from um, a brand called scandinavian presence and they are actually based in sweden i believe and um, these couple were pre-orders and just happened to be ready and show up during October. Um, so this one is called Greenery City. It's 1000 pieces and it's by the artist, I think it's So So. S-O-W, S-O-W. Um, and it's, this one is just a really cute kind of like fantasy setting. And it's like this adorable little like uh like tree village with all these animal characters and yeah it's sort of got this like building that's made in a giant tree and there's like um yeah and there's like other buildings or houses that are in trees and there's like a little deer and a squirrel and a bear and the squirrel's eating ice cream and yeah it's just really lots of cute fun details it's very pretty and um yeah so i think that's gonna be a lovely fun little adorable one to do even the back has like that squirrel character in large is just really adorable um yeah so i think that's cool and it's nice they've got a little bit of info about the artist as well and a bit of info about like i guess the story behind the greenery city so yeah it says introducing greenery city so yeah very cute and then the other one i got from them 
is called, it's 1000 pieces, it's called Spring Entanglement and it's by the artist Dora. And this one's really beautiful. Um, yeah, it's just, I guess, like sort of almost like a spring goddess or this lady amongst all these beautiful flowers and butterflies and and all her hair is like in amongst the flowers and everything. Very pretty, I love the pastel colors. It's just a beautiful illustration. Um, yeah, it's sort of a stylized, but sort of semi-realistic. Um, and yeah, it's just very pretty colors. Um, beautiful. Um, and again, just tells you a bit about the artist and the sort of story or the setting. So very pretty. And I really like the packaging. It's sort of, I love how they've sort of, not only is like the whole image sort of on the front, but then it's got a segment there. So if you had this on display, it would look very pretty. And then I like how they put elements from the main picture, like on the back and sort of even over here. Yeah, really pretty. So I haven't tried any puzzles from them. So I'm excited to do these ones hopefully soon. And then the last four in this pile are all from Martin Schwartz. So Martin Schwartz does these sort of very like hyper detailed, hyper realistic city illustrations. I think they're illustrations. They look, they almost look a bit photographic. It's so hard to tell if they're like photography or illustration or a bit of mix of both. Um, but anyway, the, I guess Martin Schwartz brand or artist or team, I'm not sure like who exactly is behind the brand. They just put out these four kind of Christmas inspired puzzles. So there's a Berlin one and these are all 500 pieces. Um, and it's just a really like cute little sort of nighttime, very festive looking Berlin image. So um, the way these are done is like, they sort of grab like, I guess, iconic buildings from around the city or the country, depending what the puzzle is. And they, so the position of where they are is not like how they actually are. They sort of collage them all together to fit into the, the space, I guess. Um, but yes, yeah, so it's got like lots of Berlin buildings and it's all, they're all lit up cause it's nighttime and there's sort of like Christmas trees down here and then lots of like fairy lights and, and like twinkling stars in the sky and the little towers are lit up and everything. So yeah, really cute. Um, I think that'll be a fun one to do. Definitely looking forward to doing a bunch of sort of Christmas or festive puzzles during December. I don't usually get super Christmassy, but I seem to have acquired a whole bunch of kind of Christmas festive puzzles. So I think why not? It'd be fun to do a whole bunch. So yeah, you expect to, I guess, maybe see me do these on Instagram sometime in December. Um, yeah, so I think that will be nice. And then the next one is Paris. Again, sort of Christmas inspired, 500 pieces. Um, this one like doesn't look super Christmassy. It's more just like Paris at night with things lit up and then, like stars and maybe a few lights here and there, but I'm not really seeing like, I feel like the Berlin, was, Berlin one was way more Christmassy with little Christmas trees and lights, but this one's just generally kind of lit up, um, but it still looks really pretty. Uh, most of his puzzles are usually like daytime ones. So it's kind of nice having these little mini nighttime ones. And most of his puzzles are 1000 pieces. So it's kind of nice having these smaller size ones as well. And then next we have Stockholm. Um, this one's a bit more festive. So we've got like the buildings and a river. I don't know the name of the river and like a river boat. But yeah, again, we've got little Christmas trees and some like fairy lights on the boat and like fairy lights and trees up here. And again, like lovely lit up towers and buildings and sparkling little twinkling stars. So yeah, it looks really pretty. I guess the idea is all of them are a bit atmospheric and sort of Christmas inspired. They're not always super Christmassy, but they sort of feel festive, I guess. Um, but yeah, this one's a really nice one as well. Haven't been to Stockholm, but would love to go one day, hopefully in the next few years, maybe. And then the last one is Copenhagen. Um, although here it's, I guess, in the Danish, which I don't know how to pronounce. So I apologize, <laughs> 500 pieces. And this one is probably the most festive of all of the uh, ones from this series. So it's Copenhagen, Hagen. Copenhagen, Copenhagen, I don't know. Um, if you're Danish, please let me know. Um, yeah, and so this one's very pretty and very Christmassy. So you've got, again, everything's very lit up, but you've got lots of Christmas lights and decorations here. Even up here, you've got like Christmas uh, neon lights, uh, lots of fairy lights on the buildings and things. Yeah, very pretty and on the boat. So yeah, beautiful. Um, another city I would love to visit. 
so yeah i think that's yeah i really think those are cute and i'm really looking forward to yeah hopefully doing all four of these during december so that's it for that pile let's move on to the next one let's go through this next pile so i actually grouped all of these ones together um, kind of purposefully because these are I think all Australian ones not that I had to put all Australian ones together but I just kind of felt like it so this one here was actually one that I swapped at that recent puzzle swap so this is from the Australian brand journey of something and this is 1000 pieces and it's called the flora plus edition um, and it's kind of like an interesting abstract image um, so the front of the box it's kind of annoying because it's even though it looks really cool and designery and trendy it doesn't show you the whole image but you've got the whole image here not on the back surprisingly even though there's like nothing on the back so i'm not sure i'm a fan of this packaging design since it doesn't really show you the whole image but it is over here so yeah it's sort of an interesting magnetic flap and you've got this lovely fabric bag um anyway the image is very colorful and kind of interesting and it's got like sort of very collagey so we've got snakes and lizards and crystals and rocks and flowers and plants sort of all smooshed together but it's quite pretty and there's a lot of detail and I really like the colors and I think they're all sort of photographs like not actually illustrations I think they look like they're it's like a photo collage um, and I think they might have one or two other designs by this same artist and let's see the artist is Claire Celeste Bursch, 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 <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, but I just really like the style and I've seen this one around. So yeah, when I saw it at the puzzle swap, I was glad to grab this one. So yeah, I think that will be a really beautiful one to do. And then next we have actually a very similar uh, designed box actually. So this is by the Australian brand Ruby Olive or their puzzle ranges like Row and Co. Um, so this one is 1000 pieces and it's these beautiful rainbows. You've sort of got, I guess, yeah, part of the image on the front. They actually do put the whole image on the, the back. Um, and this one is by the artist Lordy Dordy, which is, oh, okay. So it's like, I think the sort of art studios or artist's name, like artist's working name is Lordy Dordy, but it says their real name is Georgina Forbes. Um, yeah, and it's just called Rainbows, 1000 Pieces. And yeah, when you open it up, it's just like that other one, even though it's a different brand, but it's got the whole image on the flap, the inside of the box and the fabric bag and all that. But yeah, really pretty. I have a whole bunch by Row & Co. And they always have really beautiful, colorful, bright, cheer, like cheery designs. This one was actually gifted to me by them. So thank you very much for that. Um, surprisingly, I didn't already have this one, um, but yeah, it's really colorful and kind of simple and just, I guess, sort of a painted design. And yeah, I think it would just be really fun to put, yeah, to put together. So definitely another one that would be great on a rainy day, kind of to cheer you up and brighten things up. So yeah, I think it'll be good fun. And then what else? Okay, we've got three here from the, a pretty new brand. So the, again, these are all Australian. These are all gifted to me, which is very kind. So this is by the, I guess, brand called Country Stories. Um, and they're actually like um, a kind of a business that, well, they sell these three puzzles, which are sort of new to their collection, but they also sell artworks. But all the artworks and the images used on the puzzles are all uh, done by Australian Indigenous or Aboriginal artists um, and all the money i guess royalties from the sale of the artworks and the puzzles all go back to those artists and helps their community so yeah i think it's a kind of really cool idea and um yeah really glad i'm able to sort of promote these and you know get the word out a bit about these because they're really beautiful so i actually did this one recently uh, you can find it on instagram and none of these have like a name but it has the artist name. So this one was by Ruth Spencer and it um, has quite a lot of information on here, like both here and on the back, which sort of has the whole story behind her artwork. So a lot of these are based on like what they call the dreaming or like the dream time stories, which are sort of, I guess, uh, like Aboriginal legends or tales from like long ago, I believe. I might, hopefully I've got that right. I'm not an expert in this area, but I do remember even getting told some during like my school years and 
yeah, we got to learn a bit about Aboriginal culture and a lot of the sort of more, I guess, there's some like stories that are more well known than others, like the Rainbow Serpent and stuff. But yeah, I think it's really like neat that they've got this whole story um, and even information about what some of the symbols and shapes mean on the puzzle as well. So yeah, I think that's really nice. It's a great way to sort of uh, enjoy the artwork and also learn a bit about Aboriginal culture. So yeah, really cool. Um, yeah, and this is really beautiful. It was quite tricky to put together, as you can probably imagine. Um, all these like dots, it's pretty challenging. Um, this one, by the way, is uh, 1,024 pieces, so it's a square. This is not the whole image, it's just part of the image, but it's got the whole image on the back and it comes with this gigantic poster, so no problems there. But yeah, really nice, beautiful packaging. Um, yeah, so very, you know, grateful that they sent me these to try out. And then the next one is very colorful and beautiful and I'm hopefully going to do these ones soon this month or the next month. Um, so this is by the artist Carol Caroline Williams. Um, again the puzzle itself doesn't have a name. This one's also square and 1024 pieces. Again this is just part of the image and the whole image, that's just the stickers making that noise, is on the back. But yeah it's really beautiful. Um, got a lot of bright pinks and teals and then sort of more earthy tones like you know, red, reds and browns and blacks and then bright yellow. Yeah, really colorful and very like striking with this sort of black and white uh, dot work down the center. So yeah, really interesting, quite different to the, the last one. So I think this will be a beautiful one to put together as well. Uh, again, it had like the whole story uh, behind the image on the back. And then the last one from them is 1000 pieces. So it's just like rectangle. Um, Again, very beautiful sort of dot and line work. This is by the artist Portia Michaels. Um, again, has the whole image on the back and the story. Um, yeah, just really beautiful. More like sort of subdued colors in this one, like darker blues and sort of darker brownie reds. Still some sort of purples and oranges and stuff. But yeah, really, really stunning. I think they all look really great. Um, I really enjoyed the first one that I did. It looked, it was, I think they're all gonna be kind of challenging, especially this one. Um, but they are definitely well worth it and just look, yeah, really stunning and uh, yeah, glad to be able to try out Aboriginal artwork in puzzle form. So I think that's really cool. And then I've got a couple here from the wooden puzzle company called Mr. Bob Puzzles. So they're Australian as well. Um, I picked up this cute little Halloween one called Going Trick or Treating. It's 525 pieces. And like a lot of wooden puzzles, has cute little like shaped whimsy pieces. So they're all like Halloween themed ones, like uh, pumpkins, cats, uh, like skulls, witches, ghosts, that sort of thing. So very cute. And the image is really cute on this one. Um, it's just these little kids, one dressed as a ghost and one as a witch, I guess, yeah, going trick or treating. But looks like they're a bit scared because they've stumbled across this, what looks like a haunted uh, mansion on the hill. and like this graveyard and there's all these sort of grinning, laughing pumpkins and a little witch flying up here with the moon and spider webs and things. And yeah, very purpley orange, very Halloween. Um, yeah, really cool. And um, I quite enjoyed this one. This was over on Instagram as well. So you can go find that if you're interested. And the interesting thing with their puzzles is one, they're, the pieces are four millimeters thick. So I think they're like one of the thickest brands of wooden puzzles out there, although I think Wentworth are starting to do that like thickness as well now. But yeah, really nice and chunky to handle. And they offer to infuse your wooden puzzles with like essential oils, which is optional, but not kind of a nice, uh, like interesting idea, a nice, yeah, just a nice relaxing additive to your puzzle if you really like essential oils. I opted for them, so yeah, I really, it was very like fragrant when I opened the box up. So yeah, really enjoyed that. And yeah, really cute whimsy pieces. Um, I did have a couple issues with this one, which actually, if you want to hear a bit more about it in detail, you can check out uh, my sort of like mini review and thoughts on it in my recent uh, October puzzle roundup, which I'll link up the top somewhere. But yeah, there was, this one wasn't quite as high quality as some of the other ones I've done by them, but I still really loved it. And it was still just really cute and hopefully one that I can do each year for Halloween. And then I grabbed another one from them when I got that one. This one I haven't done yet. Uh, this is just a really cute little one, 125 pieces. It's called Beneath the Waves. Oh, I forgot to mention, sorry. The artist on this one 
By the way, the artists that Mr. Bob uses are all Australian as well, and they make everything in Australia and every all the materials that the wood used is all Australian as well. So this Halloween one is by Alicia uh, Ritigliano, and this Beneath the Waves one is by Lauren Oltz. And this is, I believe, like a sort of round slash shaped little uh, image puzzle. So it's this little underwater scene, although it's bright green. I don't know which is the right way up. This way, maybe. It's got a killer whale, a seal, a hammerhead shark, a turtle, a stingray, and like pretty like seaweed and coral and stuff. And yeah, it just looks like a pretty little watercolor kind of illustration. Um, oh, I can smell like the oils. It smells really good. Very like relaxing, I think. Kind of a nice thing to have while you're puzzling because it's puzzling is relaxing, I think, anyway, hopefully. And then you've got these sort of fragrant oils as well. So yeah. Um, but yeah, this is like, I think it's kind of more aimed at kids, but I just thought it was a very beautiful little underwater scene or, yeah, and just very pretty um, and nice and colourful. So this should be a very quick one, just 125 pieces. And I think it's only pretty small, but yeah, looking forward to doing that one sometime. And then we've got a 500 piece one here, which I picked up at the Puzzle Swap as well. And it's called Plant Babies and it's by the brand Hinkler. Um, and Hinkler, I think they're Australian, but they do sell, like, I know they sell in the UK and some other countries, but they do have, like, an Australian headquarters, and you can find their puzzles, like, in lots of places in Australia. Like, they're, they're very affordable and easy to come by. Um, but, yeah, this one's really cute, very kind of stylish, simplistic, I guess, illustration of this lady kind of looks like she's plant shopping because there's all these little plants with little price labels on them and yeah very pretty it's kind of not usually the colors I go for but I just thought it was a cool interesting illustration and quite pretty even though it's got more like subdued colors like browns and greens and kind of beiges I normally am a bit more colorful in my puzzle choices but I think it was still a fun puzzle again this is probably one I'll just do and then maybe pass on to someone else um, yeah but I think it'd be a just a fun, quick little one to do. Very pretty. And then the last three I have here are all from Flipsy, who kindly sent me their three puzzles to try out. Um, so they, I've got these in the Australian pile because even though um, you can buy them in the US and other parts of the world and uh, the owners are actually Australian and are based pretty close to me, but in the uh, Blue Mountains, so yeah. Uh, but they contacted me and asked if I'd like to try out their puzzles and they even sent me their special sort of puzzle board which helps you flip over their puzzles so yeah really cool to be able to try all these out so it's cool. Um, so the idea behind Flipsy is that they're all 500 pieces and um, so there's three in the current collection they started off as a kickstarter but now you can just buy them on their website um, and they're called Flipsy because one side of your puzzle is like the image shown on the box, but the other side is a surprise image. Um, and you don't know what it is until you complete the puzzle and flip it over. So that's why there's also a special board you can get where you like, it closes up and clips together and then you can easily flip the puzzle over without things going everywhere. Um, but yeah, I did this one over on Instagram, which is called Haunted Farmhouse. And yeah, they're all like pretty kind of spooky, um, almost a bit like realistic looking. I think they're all dig digital images. But yeah, really kind of, yeah, spooky looking farmhouse with a very atmospheric stormy kind of sky. And um, yeah, I'm not gonna show you the surprise side. I've been sworn to secrecy by Flipsy. So even on Instagram, um, you won't see the surprise side revealed. You just hear about my, th my thoughts about it. and. Um, I also did a video on these as well, which I'll link up the top. Um, and the next one was in the video. And again, I don't show the surprise side, but you can see my reaction, my you know real time reaction, I guess. Um, so anyway, yeah, I I quite like the quality of these. The pieces are pretty nice. Obviously, they have they do have a paper backing, but that's because they need to print the surprise side on something, so that's fine. And but yeah, pretty good quality. Um, actually reasonably challenging for 500 pieces because they're quite dark and stuff and a lot of detail with like grass and flowers and plants and stuff like that. Um, they can take a little longer than your sort of average 500 piece one. This one wasn't too bad, but the next one coming up took me quite a while. 
Um, but I don't mind, it gives you extra puzzle value for your puzzle dollar, I guess. Um, and I can definitely tell you that the reverse side of this, the surprise side, is pretty scary. So, yep, definitely wouldn't be going into this haunted farmhouse anytime soon. So, yeah, I thought that was a really fun concept idea, perfect for Halloween. Really, just if you want something fun and interesting and, you know, want to scare yourself silly, these are definitely a fantastic option definitely recommend them and hopefully they might make some more flipsy puzzles hope so whether they're scary ones or some other theme that would be cool yeah i just think the idea is really awesome so this is the one that i did the video on this is the haunted castle so this one's yeah actually quite a lot more tricky to put together than this one i think because of all these leaves so yeah basically this spooky looking haunted castle this stone, old stone castle um you know in amongst the forest or kind of like in a clearing it looks like you're in the forest peeking into a clearing and again very atmospheric and spooky looking and yes the uh, the other side of this is pretty spooky and uh, surprising so I definitely was nervous but did enjoy revealing to myself the spooky side so pretty cool and this last one I haven't actually done yet I'm like oh when should I do it it actually, like, this is kind of weird. To me, this looks a bit Christmassy. So this is the haunted house one. Again, these are all 500 pieces. And this one's like, actually looks a bit Christmassy. So maybe I should do a Christmas scary one. <laughs> maybe this can add, be added into the festive Christmas puzzles because I feel like it's this old kind of like house, but it has like a red door and then there's all this sort of snow and frost. So it kind of, it's Christmassy, it's festive. It's just haunted and festive. Makes sense to me. But yeah, um, I heard some people say this is the scariest one. So I'm pretty intrigued and I feel like I want to do this one soon because, you know, like once you've done a couple, you're like, oh, I really want to see what's on the other side of the other ones. But yeah, I think this one, yeah, looks pretty spooky. Um, very like abandoned looking and yeah, pretty, pretty creepy. It's like a swing, a child swing. I think that's always creepy. Children's playground equipment that's abandoned. Pretty pretty creepy but yeah so yeah I think I might have to do this one soon so yeah that is everything from this pile so let's move on to the next one we are finally up to the last stack of puzzles and if you've made it this far thank you so much for watching and you're obviously a very sensible person who came armed with a an appropriate amount of snacks so good on you uh, so let's get straight into it so I've got a few cloud raised ones here, ugh, including this really heavy 2000 piece one called Reflection. This one's by the artist Matt Leon, I believe is how you say it. And it's super bright and colorful. Uh, yeah, very me. Um, yeah, just gorgeous colors. Very, yeah, just really aesthetically pleasing. And it's just this very, well, symmetrical or mirror image, image as the name suggests, Reflection. If you kind of cut it down the middle, um, I'm guessing each side's a like mirror image of the other. And yeah, it's just made up of all these like colorful little blocks and geometric shapes of color. Very pretty, some are sort of solid, some seem to be gradiated. The background's this gorgeous like uh, sunset-y kind of color uh, gradient. Yeah, it looks really pretty. It also looks really difficult because, um, you know, because it's so bitsy, I think like trying to sort by color is gonna be difficult. The, probably the background will be the easiest. Because even if you picked out the, the lime greens, you've got some down here, 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 here. They're all over the place. Same with like all the other colors. So I think it'll definitely be challenging, but I think it'll be fun and it's going to look just gorgeous when it's done as well. Ugh. It's also going to be a good, uh, good arms day when I'm doing that one. And this one is Symmetry, uh, 1000 pieces, and it's also by the same artist. Um, yeah, again, very similar, well, same style. Um, yeah, this one's... I guess the colors are in some ways a little bit less bright than the other one. They're still bright and they're a bit more, in some ways, primary colors, like blues and reds and things. But yeah, it's a bit more kind of uh, slightly darker colors, darker like purples. And even the reds aren't, some are a bit more muted, like rusty reds and things like that. But yeah, really pretty. Again, kind of like the name suggests, symmetry. So I guess if you cut this down the middle, I guess it's, yeah, I think it's each side will be a mirrored image of the other. And again, I think it'll be pretty tricky like the other one because it's so bitsy made up of all these little geometric shapes and patterns and things. Um, but yeah, just really fun looking. And yeah, again, I think it's just gonna be uh, really enjoyable to piece together. 
but also a bit challenging. And then we have another one from Cloudberries. This one's 1000 pieces called Zodiac. And it is by, I don't know, oh, Kate Stomba. Um, yeah, and this one has this sort of like black, I guess, sky or background with the little star constellations in here. And then there's all these circles, one for each of the zodiacs. And they're very pretty and colorful, um, but they're sort of a little bit muted. Like they have these sort of pastel -y colors, like minty greens and some purples, but then brighter yellows and stuff. But there is a sort of subtle, like they're a bit more subtle or held back. Um, and they're actually very 70s and even the illustrations have a real 70s style to it. At least that's how I sort of interpret it. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, they kind of make me think of, you know, even things like Sergeant Pepper sort of stuff on the Beatles, which I think is that more 60s or 70s? I don't know, but that sort of thing, like it makes me think of that a bit. Um, but yeah, I really like it. There's, there's actually kind of a lot of very pretty details in this, like a lot of florals, again, very 60s, 70s, um, and swirly patterns and a bit psychedelic actually. Um, but yeah, really pretty. I'm, I'm not really into zodiacs, to be honest. Like I used to be as a teenager, but I don't really believe in that sort of thing now. But I think the imagery for them is just really beautiful in a lot of puzzles, especially. So yeah, I couldn't help but get this one. And then we've got a couple here from Seiko. So this one was actually gifted to me from the online store Puzzle Palace, probably because I just buy a lot of puzzles from them. <laughs> so it was very nice, thank you. It's not really my style, but it's still, you know, a lovely, uh, you know, I'm definitely grateful for getting a freebie puzzle from them, so it's nice. So this is a 750 piece one, and I think this one's called Little Brothers, and it's by the artist Kentaro Nishino, which is a Japanese name, but I'm not too sure if he is actually Japanese or, uh, or what. Um, but yeah, I think it's called Little Brothers. And as usual, <laughs> like all Seikos, it seems to have like the other, like the whole three in the series, like the little images down here on the bottom of the box. But of course, doesn't actually say the name of any of them. So that's great. But I think I looked it up and that's like what it said anyway. But yeah, it's these sort of like cute little, uh, like little white tiger cubs and yeah, just sort of, in amongst this bright nature these like bright sort of lime green lilies and this white butterfly or little butterflies everywhere it's sort of like a moon full moon background and even some mountains and trees and stuff in the distance and some pretty little flowers and looks like there's a bit of a maybe they're on a riverbank or something even little ladybirds so it's quite beautifully done but yeah it's just not quite my style so don't know if i'll be doing this one or if i'll maybe even just pass it on straight away so yeah but still kind of cute the next one, which I did choose myself, um, is also from Seiko, 300 pieces. This one's called Marvelous Moss. And I'm not, I think this one's called Moss Bowls. I should probably show it to you. Um, and again, like the other one, it's got like three in the series. They seem to usually have three in their series, but it doesn't say the names of them. Um, and even this one, like Marvelous Moss is the name of the series. Um, but yeah, I think this one's called Moss Bowls. And yeah, I don't know, I just really liked it. It's sort of, I think it's like a digital image or something. I'm not too sure how it's being created. But yeah, it's just these sort of planter bowls or pots of different sort of mossy little, I guess, landscapes. Some have flowers in them and some have little pebbles and stuff and then there's ferns and I don't know. I just, there's something about it. It's pretty, I've been trying not to buy too many Seikos just because I, I'm not really a fan of the pieces and all the dust and everything, but this one was a good price and I just really, I had this, I had been watching this particular one because I just really like the image on like my Amazon wish list and just keeping an eye on it. Um, but I think I actually end up finding it on an online store in Australia. But anyway, I digress. Um, point is, I, yeah, I was watching it for a while and finally became a good price and I grabbed it. And yeah, and I think that's sort of how I'm just going to treat Seiko is just going to be pretty uh, they kind of have to make the I really love it list <laughs> before I'm going to think about buying it, which is kind of what I should really do for, for all puzzles, really, I guess. Anyway, that was a bit of a ramble. The next one is from Seiko. It is stunning. And I recently did this one in, on Instagram. So go check that out if you're interested. It's called Garden of Eden, 500 pieces. And it's this beautiful, it's a square puzzle. Um, yeah, beautiful sort of very busy, packed kind of collage uh, type image of 
like crystals and flowers and leaves and lots of birds, insects, a few animals, a little monkey there. And I don't know if that's like an, I don't know what kind, an armadillo or something. <laughs> I'm not too sure. Um, yeah, but butterflies and mushrooms, like lots of flora and fauna type stuff, but mostly birds. Um, and then one thing I didn't know about this is when I bought it is I just thought the background was like a plain, like bluey color, but turns out it's this gorgeous bluey gray metallic. It's so pretty. Um, and yeah, so not only is the box metallic behind all the imagery, but the pieces are too. And it's just, it's really stunning. Um, so I thought it was beautiful anyway when I ordered it, but that was like a bonus surprise. I forgot to say the artist for this is Claire Celeste Bursch. Let's hope I said that right. Um, but yeah, just beautiful. Um, and there's sort of a very illustrative style. Uh, a lot of a lot of the birds and flowers and stuff and yeah really beautiful very colorful um, so busy but like very very pretty and then we have here three here from bits and pieces now these actually came as like a set but I'll go through each one individually um, so because they're all from the same artist so this first one they're all 500 pieces this one is called okay let's see if I can pronounce this Lepidoptery, <laughs> um, but it's like the study of like moths and butterflies and it's by the artist Tabitha Brown and they're all by Tabitha Brown and um, yeah I kind of was alerted to these because one I was interested in the artist because I'd bought a few uh, puzzles of hers by Gallison and I really like the style and then uh, one of you lovely viewers pointed out to me that Bits and Pieces had a set uh, with her artwork and that's what this is. It also comes in 300 pieces too. Uh, but yeah, just she does beautiful, just really gorgeous uh, images, I think. So, you know, I couldn't help but get them and they were a really good price. Um, but yeah, just beautiful. This lady here sort of just looking so tranquil and serene in, I guess, maybe a greenhouse or somewhere because there's all these plants in the background. But just, yeah, all these beautiful butterflies that kind of match her lovely orange dress. And she's got sort of lace gloves on and she looks very stylish, actually. But yeah, very pretty and kind of like... Her style is made up of almost uh, like almost blocky kind of shapes. Like there's little bits of detail, but then some are just solid colored blocks like her hair and her arms and stuff. Yeah, very interesting style and very beautiful images. And the next one in this set is called Record Player, 500 pieces, pieces as well. And yeah, just this like young looking lady who's just sort of Looks, she looks pretty serene and chill as well. She's got her record player out. She's got her pile of records, stack of records here. And she just looks like she's in a lovely room with plants. And I guess it's the sun or the moon. I'm not sure if it's the sun or the moon out there. But yeah, she just looks like she's chilling, relaxing, listening to her favorite albums. Yeah, and I really like the colors in this one, her pink top and the sort of purples and these pretty blues. Yeah, beautiful. So another gorgeous one. And then the last one from her is called library and uh, this is quite colorful as well and it's got these three ladies and they're all just reading um, they look quite dressed up as well and again they look pretty chill and serene in a lovely room with i guess the library nice colorful books again lots of plants and they got yeah very pretty sort of blouses or dresses on and each reading some sort of interesting book and this beautiful sort of window bay window and i just realized like a lot of them have a bit of a collagey feel to them so although, like I said, there's like blocky sort of colors, like color block, like their tops and hair and everything, there is sort of like bits and pieces of almost like cut out paper or some sort of textured bits and pieces in here. Like the view from the bay window looks like textured paper or something. Yeah, it's really interesting. Um, or even screen printed elements. So quite a sort of interesting art style. But yeah, gorgeous colors, really love this image as well. And then we've got two more and then we will be done. Um, so this next one is kind of a new to me brand. It's called Mustard. And I think I kind of looked them up and they sell like kind of novelty-ish items, including a few puzzles. Um, kind of, they kind of remind me of Genuine Fred actually. It's very sort of similar feel. Um, but I saw this puzzle around for a bit and it's called Hypno Puzzle 1000 Pieces and it's this bonkers uh, round kind of rainbow well yeah it is a rainbow gradient but it's like so it's i guess well like the name suggests hypno it's 
going to kind of make your eyes grow a bit wonky, I think, doing this one, all these like kind of rainbow rings, like starting small and going up big, but not centered off to one side. So yeah, I think this one's going to be pretty challenging, but kind of fun to do. I couldn't resist. Um, and then like I saw the price come down and I was like, yoink, time to get that one. Um, and I actually had a sneak peek. I opened it up and it's pretty nice actually. The pieces look quite nice, like cardboard backing and kind of a nice surface. They look like they have a bit of dust, but it comes with like a full size poster and like a little cloth bag to put your pieces in afterwards. And yeah, it actually looks pretty nice and the box feels pretty nice. So I'm kind of surprised because often these sort of novelty kind of brands aren't always that good. But then that being said, Jenny and Fred have pretty nice puzzles too. So I'd say this is kind of comparable to that. So yeah, pretty impressed. Um, have yet to do the puzzle, but um, I'm looking forward to it. It looks intriguing. I'm yeah, definitely interested. Just pop that one there. And then our very last puzzle. Um, this one I got in the recent puzzle swap that I went to. Um, and it's, who's it by? Um, oh, Lawrence King Publishing. Uh, I don't know who the artist is. Oh, Barry Falls, I believe is. Well, it says, no, hang on, maybe. Illustrations, Barry Falls, designed by Eleni Calcott. Um, but anyway, it's the world of Jane Austen. There's a whole series of the world of something. So this is Jane Austen. Um, and there's like, uh, so there's a jigsaw puzzle with 60 characters and great houses to find. So I think, yeah, there's like all these little characters listed around the sides from like the stories and stuff. So there might be more things on the back. I don't know. But yeah, just this beautiful sort of busy scene. Um, it's got, it's not the full image on the front, but it does have the full image on the back and I will try and pop it up here as well. But yeah, it's just a sort of kind of, yeah, a big scene of like different, I guess, uh, like buildings and places and houses that have featured in Jane Austen novels. Um, and then I guess the characters as well. And yeah, it's just very pretty and it's sort of like parklands and a river and yeah, beautiful buildings and houses and like manners and things, very pretty. And yeah, and all in the sort of style or um, time period of Jane Austen. So yeah, it looks very pretty. The colors look nice. I don't know how it's been done, whether it's just digital or painted, I'm not too sure. But yeah, it's kind of got a whimsical feel about it and there's a lot of little details. So I think it'll be quite fun to do. And yeah, really glad to have picked this one up in the swap. So thank you again for sticking with me and making it all the way to the end. Yeah, that is everything for the month of October. So that was the whole entire haul for the month of October. And uh, yep, that was the biggest one that I've ever done. Uh, there were so many different puzzles, uh, just lots of really awesome puzzles, including different types, wooden ones, big ones, small ones. Yeah, just a real mix, a real mix of art styles, but you know, all just really fun in their own way. So definitely looking forward to uh, eventually getting through them all. Um, so in the comments below, let me know what puzzles from the haul were your favorites? Were there any there that you also got? Or let me know what puzzles you did get during the month of October. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure you show that like button some love. And for more videos like this and for even more puzzle content, then don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. By subscribing, not only will you be the first to know when a new video is released, but you're also helping this channel grow. And you can find me over on Instagram at jigsaw underscore where you'll find even more puzzle content. Thanks so much and see you next time. Bye.